Hey everyone, welcome to my series on creating a game engine and game with C++. Today I'm going to start writing a Vulkan renderer from scratch. Just a warning, you will not see some crazy advanced Vulkan program at the end of this video. It's a devlog that covers like 5 hours of work, so let's lower those expectations a little bit. This is not really a tutorial either because I've literally never used Vulkan before, but I want to provide some value to you guys, so I'll show my process for learning a brand new API and how I did it. I've provided links to all of the resources I used in the description of this video. First of all, what even is Vulkan anyway? It's a 3D graphics API similar to DirectX and OpenGL, but it's kind of the logical successor to OpenGL. The idea behind Vulkan is that it's very low level and essentially abstracts away no details about what your graphics hardware is doing. This allows for very CPU efficient rendering code, but it will not necessarily make GPU operations any faster. Its low level nature has also led to this perception that it's very difficult to learn and use, so let's see if that's actually true. I'm going to share a secret with you guys, and you have to promise not to tell the Illuminati that I shared this with you, okay? It's going to sound crazy. But get this, alright, no one writes an API that you can't use. It's incredible, I know, it seems kind of obvious, but once you realize that APIs are designed to be used by anyone, not just those who wrote them, you'll realize that the developers of Vulkan have gone out of their way to publish samples and other learning materials for others to learn their API. In fact, if they didn't do this, no one would use it. I spent some time reading the Vulkan specification. Now, I know it looks long and boring, but there is a huge amount of useful information here. One thing I like to do when learning anything is to memorize as much as I can of the subject matter. It might seem pointless, but it makes things a lot easier and sort of frees up your mind to actually understand what you're reading, instead of getting hung up on jargon or language that you don't understand. I used a free program called Anki to make some flashcards, which I found is the most effective way to memorize things, for me anyway. I am pretty familiar with how OpenGL and DirectX work, and it became clear very quickly that Vulkan has some major differences. Accommodating these differences will take a bit of restructuring of my code, but nothing too major. The main problem is that in a sense OpenGL and DirectX are a bit looser in terms of what you can and can't do. You also have to keep in mind that my game engine needs to support all three APIs in one common interface, so I can't really take any shortcuts here. I wanted to at least have something to show though, so I created some skeleton objects which will basically implement the Vulkan rendering code in the future. I didn't really have time this week to render anything on the screen, but you'll have to trust me that this code actually does set up a Vulkan device in context, or you could check out the code on my GitHub link in description. I also created a more legit demo project with multiple demos that I could easily run and make sure that I haven't broken anything in my restructuring. So for example, here is the multiple window demo since my engine supports multiple game windows. As you can see, it works the same with OpenGL and DirectX, but the Vulkan version currently outputs nothing. What a shame. Now I know what you're thinking, Anj, this is not much of a flex, bro. I've seen other people write an entire game on YouTube in 24 hours. Come on, man, this is like two screens, and they're different colors. I, I don't get it. Well, you see, if I wanted to display something on the screen from scratch in 24 hours, it's, uh, it's, it's actually not that hard. See, here is a demo in the Vulkan Samples GitHub repository, which pretty much sets up everything you need to render to the screen. It's all right there. It only renders a triangle, but it's pretty easy to swap out that geometry for something else, and you're done. I already have shaders written, so I mean, I could have just copied this and pasted it into my own code base. but when you're trying to write something that can support multiple APIs, this haphazard approach isn't going to work very well. And I'm trying to write an engine that can be used in multiple projects, not just a specific game. Good software takes time, and my goal is getting a good understanding of Vulkan and writing a solid implementation that I can use in the future. So yeah, a pretty boring video this week, my apologies. I know I promised months ago that if I reached 500 subscribers, I would do a Vulkan video. You got me. I've actually been working on a different project where I rendered this image with my own ray tracer. I'm very proud of this. This took a, this took a very long time. 
uh, please check out that video if ray tracing interests you. I actually show the process of modeling the car, and I talk a bit about the node-based programming language I wrote, so yeah, check it out if you want. I'll have some actual game updates soon, and I am still working on this project, it just isn't the only project that I'm working on. Hope you guys enjoyed the video anyway, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.